Hammer Sports is a company of great brands. Our brands are known all over the world. They are loved by the consumers. They engage with the consumers everywhere in the world. They are used by the best athletes in the world. And those best athletes, they win, they perform, they improve with our brands. It's a house of great brands. It's also a house of great people. We have an organization who likes to compete. We like to perform. We like to improve. We like to transform ourselves. And because of that, because of the combination of great brands and a strong organization, we deliver good, improving results year after year, sustainably. We like to improve. Today, that's what we're going to talk about. My name is Heikki Takala. I'm the CEO of the company. Welcome to the Amherst Sports 2018 Capital Markets Day. The topic is sustainable growth and value creation enabled by focused transformation. And what we will go through today, we will show you that we continue to grow and create value as a company. Our strategy, our strategies are working and the organic growth drivers remain largely unchanged, i.e. the strategy continues to be valid going forward. We continue our transformation toward areas of faster growth, higher profitability, and asset efficiency with increasing weight of soft goods, direct to consumer, and China. And you will hear us talking a lot about that transformation toward areas of faster growth, higher profitability, and better asset efficiency. As part of the transformation today, we will broaden our toolbox to include strategic portfolio choices. We are looking at becoming a more focused company to enable the transformation to give its full impact. So, we continue to drive sustainable, profitable growth over the cycle. And if we look back since 2010, since the current uh, management and current uh, strategy kind of started, we delivered an uninterrupted set of growth years, years of growth and improvement. And if we look at <clears throat> what has actually driven that growth, it's been an overall improvement across the portfolio, but we have three areas which have contributed disproportionately. Firstly, soft goods. Secondly, direct-to-consumer. And thirdly, China. These have been transformational. The vast majority of our growth has also been organic. 2018 outlook. There's no change. It uh, stays the same as we uh, informed in, in Q2, which basically says that 2018 is yet another year of uh, that long-term improvement, that long-term glide path. It's a logical building block year. Our performance has driven long-term value creation. And if you look at our share price development since 2010, we are up more than 300%, and our TSR is uh, more than 360%, way ahead of the, the uh, benchmark. And if we take a slightly shorter cycle since 2015, we still delivered well, about 80% uh, share price increase, and TSR at about 90%. So the performance is equal to the value creation. The performance has been based on strategic choices. So we know what we wanted to do, and we did it, and we can attribute the performance back to what we wanted to do, what we decided to do. Number one, we always talk about our sustainable growth model. Secondly, we have a clear portfolio role for each of the businesses we have in the portfolio. Thirdly, we go for group scale and synergy, integration. And fourthly, we've chosen a few important strategic transformational areas. We called it a few years ago strategic acceleration in soft goods, in direct-to-consumer, China, United States, and digital. I'll go through them now one by one so that we actually you know, uh, open this up a, a bit. Firstly, our sustainable growth model. This is the framework against which we work every day. We want to grow every year. We want to deliver improving profit and profit uh, and cash flow every year. And every year we invest sufficiently back into the future to make sure that that sustainable, sustainable growth model continues for the years to come. We do not seek to maximize the short-term results. 
but we deliver appropriate improvement year on year. Continuous renewal, productivity improvement, we drive that through, op through KPIs, which are more operational. And then we take a long-term view, and uh, every three to five years, we confirm that the, the topic of are we the better owner or the best owner for all of the businesses, and we base our long-term strategy on a long-term commitment. We commit over a cycle. We don't commit for one year. We look at, are we the better owner? Can we actually improve the business better than our competition? Or does the business or the group contribute through exceptional scale and synergies? And when we put that all together, we have a good solid view whether we should go for that commitment cycle or not. Secondly, we have that clear portfolio role for each of the business units. We have seven business units from apparel to footwear to winter sport equipment, ball sports, fitness, sports instruments, and cycling. Each of them have a distinct role based on their track record, based on their outlook, and based on how the market is evolving, where we see trends being positive, negative, if the market is growing or not, and we put it all together in a strategic game plan. Apparel has the role of full acceleration. That's what we wanted to do with it. And if I look at uh, over the cycle, have we accelerated fully? We are fully in line, double-edged growth. Footwear, sustainable, profitable, fast growth. In line overall, that's been one of the key growth drivers in the company, very profitable. And we have a hint of yellow in that bubble for the reason that in 2018 we need to do some distribution cleanup, which is having an adverse impact on the top line, but it's still the right thing to do vis-a-vis -vis the sustainable long-term business model. Winter sport equipment, we assigned it the role of sustainable profitability in all weather conditions, knowing that the winters are volatile and, and hard, difficult to predict. Over this cycle, we delivered significant gross margin improvement, operational efficiencies, operational uh, lead time reductions and the likes. And today, our gross margins are up to 800 basis points higher than they were 10 years ago. And clearly, we deliver strong gains and strong uh, uh, results in that business, fully in line, tick box. Bossports, we are the global leader in the segments where we play, in most of the segments where we play. But the market is not uh, fast growing, it's growing at all. So we prioritize cash and profit. So we say cash and profit first. It doesn't mean that we don't want to, to, to grow. We do want to grow in areas where there's growth available, but we, we go for cash and profit first. And if I look at the development over the cycle, we can say that we are largely in line with the role. We are improving year on year. And I give a slight yellow tick for the reason that growth remains a bit challenging and we would like to get to at least inflation level growth even in that business. Fitness, sustainable, profitable growth. We reignited that growth through a significant investment in 2015-16 as we saw that we were not playing in segments which were growing fast in the marketplace and we knew that if we enter there, there is profitable growth available. The growth is now accelerating, it took a bit more time than we expected, but it's now accelerating and we look in quite confidently to the growth outlook. And as that is coming, we can then attack the profitability piece, which now yet remains at yellow at maximum, but improving as we go forward. Sports instruments, very much the same. 2015-16, we saw that there is a significant opportunity in the wearables market, in the digitalization, and we decided to invest into it to make sure that we are not left behind with something which can possibly become really interesting, really attractive. We invested, and uh, the growth, especially this year, is step-changed. It's the fastest growing part of the company today, uh, relatively fastest. And uh, as that growth is coming, we'll, of course, seek to improve the profitability back to the target level following a significant upfront investment. Finally, cycling. Whilst we have an iconic brand, or we have actually two iconic brands in the business, and whilst the business is quite dynamic in certain segments, our capabilities and capacities may not have been exactly in the right place. We have a bit too much factory footprint 
and uh, things like that, which are fixed assets, whilst the market continues to move somewhere else. So hence, our growth and our uh, profitability have been below our expectations, and we assign it a, a red. So we are, we are behind. Thirdly, group scale and synergy. So as we always say, Amer is a better owner if it can bring distinctive scale and synergy benefits to the businesses. And we typically talk about four areas. Number one, go to market. We have a scalable global go to market. We have scalable shared sales organization. Our back offices are the same when we operate our retail, when we own retail, when we operate e-commerce. Our systems are the same, etc., etc. That's driving us growth, profitable growth. Operations, warehousing, distribution, manufacturing, sourcing, scalable, we do that together. Thirdly, digital business platforms. Digitalization of the company is key. And if we do it seven times across the different brands, it doesn't work. We need to do it once, and that's the only way for us to run scale and give the benefits, give the capability across the company. And finally, of course, we provide long-term investment capacity. We can take that long-term cycle, and we can even let some of the short-term results go for the benefit of the long-term. And that's the funding for growth, as we just done with fitness, as we just done with sports instruments, and as we've just done with the latest acquisition of uh, peak performance. Finally, transformation. This strategic acceleration, I said we have five areas, soft goods, direct-to-consumer, China, United States, connected devices and services. This is where we decided that the bulk of the company growth will come from, either organically or non-organically. And in soft goods, last year, when I was here, I said that we had reached the scale of one billion. And we set us, ourselves the target GAGR of 9 to 10%, and we can tick the box. That's the GAGR we are on. So that continues to drive us forward. Direct to consumer, last year we were at 250 million, and we said we will get to 500 million quite soon. Target GAGR, 20 plus percent. And again in 2018, that's where we are. Tick box, it's working. China, Last year we were 120 million, having started only in 2011, so you can say that this is small, and we agree it's small, but it's getting bigger. And the target GAGR is 20 plus percent, and again this year that's what we will deliver, and these things will then continue transforming us. United States, last year we were 1 billion, in 15, 16, or actually 16, 17, we set ourselves the target to grow faster, and then at the same time, you may remember, uh, companies like the Sports Authority went bankrupt or the Chapter 11, and we lost more than 1,000 distribution doors over that cycle, and we delivered two flat years rather than growing. So then last year we said that, okay, let's reset our growth aspiration to kind of uh, match the market realities, and we said let's get back to a mid-single-digit growth and I'm happy to say that this year that seems to be the case, and we are now gradually returning to a mid-single-digit growth in the United States. Finally, connected devices and digital services, so call it the digitalization of the company. It's proceeding well, we are now more digital than ever, we have devices, we have services, we have digital uh, manufacturing today, our warehouses start to be relatively digitally operating. We have databases, we have digital systems in the company. That's no longer a choice, it's a must. If you want to be a tomorrow's company, you need to be sufficiently and appropriately digitalized. But even here, we can say we are on track versus our targets and aspirations. So what's the outcome of the transformation that we're talking about here? So the portfolio is shifting toward areas of faster growth, higher profitability, and better asset efficiency. I take three main transformational items, which I quoted earlier in the presentation. Soft goods, the share of the business in 2010, of our company business, was about 20%. This year, it's going to be 40%. So you see the transformation happening. Direct to consumer, back in the 2010, was below 2%. This year, we will bypass 10%. And if you actually then look at the relevant business, because we might want to exclude, for example, Bricor, which is business to business, which is not business to consumer, it's actually significantly higher. 
in the so soft goods units, it can be up to 25, 30%. So we are, we are pushing it where the consumer is actually active online. And then finally, China was 1% of our sales back in 2010. Today, it's 6% 6 of the portfolio. And with those KGARs, which I was quoting, of course, it's expected to continue driving the transformation. Growth and transformation will continue, but we also have this recent slowdown, and that calls for expanded toolbox. Some new choices are needed. And if we look at our long-term improvement, which I already showed, uh, growth and profitability came, but slowed down in, in 16 and 17. Why? Well, actually, I, I, I have marked that with the red dot with the box. You can see the years 16 and 17. Why? The United States market took a slowdown, as I just explained. And secondly, we did invest upfront quite a lot into the digital fitness sports instruments acceleration. And uh, we invested and did not get the immediate payback. It's a technology investment you never know, and it takes a bit of time. And it started to yield with the delay. Today, I'm much more relaxed. I can say it's starting to, to, to yield, but it took a bit of time. Hence, it took a toll on our top line and on our profitability versus the line we had been on until that. What then happened when the performance was not exactly in line with our expectations? We fell just a notch below our, our kind of aspiration. Uh, value value creation started to lag, and uh, since 2016, our share price is up only 10%, and our total shareholder return is up only 16%, both of which are below the market. So we actually fell for the first time below the market, below the benchmark. And hence, we say that sharper choices and expanded toolbox will be needed for us to get back to the target company performance, which then, in turn, should translate into value creation performance. So what do, we, what do we do going forward? So no surprise, we capitalize on the proven building blocks, the things which are working and which we know are driving our success today. And then at the same time, we will broaden the toolbox. So capitalize on the, on the proven building blocks, sustainable growth model, driving business according to the portfolio roles. We pursue group scale and synergy as until now, and we continue that strategic acceleration through the soft goods, where we now have even the big performance business in the portfolio. We drive direct to consumer, China, United States, and the overall digitalization of the company. So we can say these things continue. They are there to stay. And then we expand the toolbox. And, uh, we will need to further accelerate our transformation through strategic portfolio choices. And here, in this chart, we've taken kind of two views of the business. If you look at the y-axis, we look at, are we a better owner? Are we delivering strong current performance? And the other axis, are we the better owner? Do we create and find scale and synergy benefit for the business and or for the group. And if we then look at the portfolio, we see that we have distinct areas in the portfolio. The first, the big bucket there, it's apparel, footwear, winter sport equipment, and ball sports. Clearly, they are all performing well, as you saw earlier, and they are synergistic, and they happen to be the largest parts of the company. So they, that's where we are typically market leading or segment leading. We have a strong global foothold, and they, <clears throat> these businesses can benefit from the group uh, underlying operations. So clearly, that's to accelerate, that's to continue, that's to pursue. The, this is the bucket where we, where we pursue. The next one, which may look a bit more dramatic, it's not meant to be dramatic, it's simply in an order. The next bucket is the, the current performance, not yet in line with expectations, so we have a bit, a bit of work to do before we can say that, yep, it's a tick box. And equally, of course, through the nature of the businesses, fitness and sports instruments, more digital, more technology, etc., they are a bit less synergistic than the rest of the portfolio, and hence the scale and synergy potential is slightly more limited. 
doesn't mean that it's far away, but versus the <clears throat> big businesses on the right side, clearly they are a notch behind. <clears throat> if I then, um, the, the point here is there, before we then go to the next uh, long, long, long term cycle and uh, commit back and uh, may, maybe start a new investment cycle, we now take the current cycle to its end, we confirm that we can perform and we confirm that these businesses can contribute to the company at the target level and then based on that we'll make the next choices. And then we have one business, the smallest one, the smallest unit in the company which is below 4% of the company sales today. We look at the current performance which is limited for the reasons I mentioned and where we see that we are not able to give enough scale and synergy potential uh, and benefits to that business. Hence we say, rather than going and keeping going and keeping going and trying, we've been trying for quite some time, we've done good things, but it's clearly taking a lot of time, effort, and it's not responding in line with expectations. Hence we say, we're going to put this business under strategic review to make sure we really understand are we the best owner for the business. If I then look at what's going to happen, when we drive the strategy, both the organic and the, tr and the new transformational items, we see that again the company continues to shift toward areas of faster growth, higher profitability and better asset efficiency. So I've taken here the same three transformational drivers, soft goods, direct-to-consumer and China. And here I take the business share of the company today. So in soft goods it's 40%. Tomorrow, over the next cycle, it will be 50%. And in the future, it is likely to continue growing. Direct to consumer, today, as said already, 10% of the company, tomorrow, toward 20%, and share of the business continues to go. That's where the consumer is, that's where the consumer operates today. We will be there. China, today, reasonable, 6% of the company sales, tomorrow, 10%, and uh, uh, in the years to come, surely much more than that. So I stop here, I hand over to uh, Jussi Sitonen, our CFO. Jussi will then go deeper into the value creation logic and kind of open up what this means in practice. So Jussi, please.